All right, so I'll just start the thread. And I'm going to get um, some paint brush fibers. Uh, you can get these at art stores. This is this is actually a much bigger brush that I took the handle completely off. Look for fibers that are uniform in size because they you can get uh, paint brushes that have varying sizes of bristles. What you want is something that has uniform diameter and very fine. These are uh, almost indestructible. Uh, you can also use mousse main. Now the tails are quite long, at least as long as the body. You can adjust once. Once you've got them tied on to the top of the hook, you can adjust the length by pulling in either direction. And just hold them to make sure they stay on top of the hook as you wind back. Now there's a number of ways you can separate the tails. As you get close to the back is when I like to add the ribbing. And one of the things I do for ribbing is I take um, gold thread. This is a crinic thread. And you can find it in, in uh, sewing stores. What I'm going to do with this, if I hold that there, can you can it focus? Yep. Yes. It's just crinic metallic thread. That's all it is. So I just cut off a little piece, and you unravel the ends. Invariably, one end will be easier to unravel than the other, and take out the core. Okay, that's good enough. So I'm left with a very, very thin wrapping of this like a mylar look like wrapping that was on the uh, on the thread. And I'm going to tie it in on the underside of the hook. A couple of turns and I'm going to just pull it tight. Now what I want to do is make sure that the tail fibers stay on top. That other the the Ribbing can wander a little bit, doesn't really matter. When I get to the back, this is where I want to separate the, uh, the tails. Now to separate the tails, my favorite method is simply use the tying thread. And what I do is I simply fold them back a little bit and they will separate naturally into, I've got four fibers here. So they separate quite naturally. I'm going to go over the near one and under the far one. Okay. So I have the tails separated. Now, for insurance, take some this is CA glue CA glue is super glue I use it um, for my wood turning and um, 
I like to use the very, very thin stuff. I just put a drop here. This is just a, a Robertson screw that's set into a block of wood. Now that will not set. But as soon as I touch it to the hook here, so that locks in the two tails. Can you see the, this? Yep. Show? Yep. Okay. So now we have to build up a little thin body. And I just do that with the thread, try and keep it as flat as possible. Sorry, what color was the thread again? Does that matter? It's just rusty, rusty brown. Rusty brown. Yes. This, this, this is a uni thread. Down a bit. Okay. And now the ribbon. I'm just going to twist this up until it goes round again. And this makes for a very delicate little rib. Okay, done. So there's tail and body. Just to give it a little bit of protection and depth of color, I just take some thin head cement and just <coughs> add a little coating to the Okay. Now that's just one way to separate tails. Would you like me to show you another? Because that, that takes a little bit of learning, but in my opinion, it's the easiest way to, uh, to do it. Okay. I'm going to get this thread out of the way. And this piece of thread that I held back, I'm going to do the same thing. Pull the tails back until they sort of naturally separate. I'm going to take this piece of thread and go around the hook and hold it together kind of like the reins on a horse and just bring it up in between the tails. And just lash it down. Now with this, depending on how much tension I apply, I can get a little bit more spread. And so I'm happy with that position. Is that visible there? Yep. So that's just taking the thread around, pulling it and separating the tails. That's a very easy way of separating the tails. The downside is that when you've got living, it can get in the way. Do you ever just use the tag end and leave it on and then pull it forward? Yes, but this gets it on both sides of the yep. hook. Whereas with the, the tag end, you've only got one, unless you double that up. Okay. Okay. okay, so we've got a body with no rig. Right, bringing material. Um, I like to use organza. And uh, 
The reason I like to use organza is because it gives a shimmer to the wings that's almost impossible to reproduce with any other material. So I've got some samples of organza here because it's, I don't know if you can see it in fly shops, but you can certainly see it at dressmakers in the fly. How many flies will that This will tie a couple of thousand. 63 billion. <laughs> I, I, somebody asked, um, it was uh, Charlie Craven at the Midwest show. He had a, a package of dubbing, and he was using dubbing to tie a certain pattern. He was using just a very little bit. And somebody said, well, how, much, how many flies can you tie with that? And he said, I'll tell you exactly, 800 dozen. <laughs> he actually produced 800 dozen with a package of dubbing. Anyway, I don't know how many this will tie, but um, I, have, I have curiosity, and I, I work close to dressmaker supplies, and sometimes I go for a walk at lunchtime, and I wander in, and I see this stuff, and I say, I wonder what this will look like on a hook. So organza is a, um, is a material that was originally um, made using silk, and the characteristic of it is that it has, um, you know, if I tell you about warp and weft on the loom, you understand what I mean? The warp is the, the foundation, which is all of the fibers running vertically, and the weft is the fiber that runs east-west. And the weft on organza is a very stiff fiber. And if you, you pull at it, you can get these very um, stiff fibers coming out. They have a lot of shimmer. So that's the one. And there's different colors and there's different machines. And each one of them will have their uh, their use. Um, I'm going to be using this because it's, uh, it's very shimmery. And um, it also is very stiff and easy to see. The other stuff isn't as easy to see. So what you have to do is what you want to do is, is cut off a strip. There you go. You need a strip about three eighths of an inch wide with the the weft fibers, the stiff fibers running lengthwise. And then you cut that into smaller segments. So here's one, this is the gold. Is that visible there? Yeah. So I cut off about an inch and a quarter of this. And I take a few fibers off the top. Until I start exposing the warp fibers. You see a fringe there? See that little fringe? So the idea is once you get this down to wing size, you want to take some fibers off the bottom as well. You'll end up with a rectangle of fabric. Something like that. And that's about enough fibers to tie a decent wing for a fly about this size. So what you want to do is then start removing the warp fibers in the middle. Those reddish fibers have to start coming out. Now the first couple are hard to take out, but if you get a good pair of tweezers, there we go. So a good pair of tweezers will actually help you pull these guys out fairly easily. 
Now, why do we want to do this as opposed to pulling off all of the the warp? Can you see the the sort of blank space in the in the middle? So the idea to do this, why I do this, is because um, if you've ever tied uh, like a duck quill wing, here's one that I've already prepared and it's ready to go. There, there's a, a fairly large segment right in the middle that has no uh, warp fibers. So I'm going to hold this, and if you've ever tied in a duck quill wing, what I will do is when I apply the thread, it'll collapse the fibers down in a nice little bunch. But it'll leave the fibers straight out. If I were to take all of those warp fibers out, you end up with a bundle of sticks, and you don't get the spread. So imagine that you're tying sort of a, a duck quill wing. So we're going to go up and then just pull down. Now here, I can turn it sideways. And figure eight it. So now that the wing is tied in, I can finish the uh, thorax. I can either do the take out these remaining remaining fibers now, or wait until after the thorax is done. I'm going to do the latter, and I'm just going to use some of this ultra-fine dubbing. And just to get the fibers aligned, I'm going to just pull it apart and put it back together. Because literally, I want to get my fingers dirty with this stuff, no more than just a, a fine coating to dress the thread. I'm going to dye, just wrap a very small thorax section on this fly. Finishing up just behind the eye of the hook. I'm almost done. Okay, so all I have left now is to remove the remaining warp fibers, and I can do that just with a little comb. See the spread? Okay, so I'm just going to hold those wings up together. I can always trim them back if I need to. Just cut to shape. Done. 